Yeah, I think the OPEC meeting was somewhat uh, anticlimactic. They didn't uh, cut deeper, as was sort of whispered going into the meeting. They did extend it uh, for a full nine months rather than the six that they had previously done. So we're sort of settling in. I think, you know, the problem the oil market has um, is really the, the, the global economic setup right now. Uh, the Asian economies are struggling mightily and are really getting hurt, hit hard uh, by the U.S.-China trade war. I mean, the manufacturing PMI data, the GDPs, the export data, this last week out of South Korea in particular, just plunging. So and that's where the that's the that's the uh, breadbasket for for crude oil. It's the heart of the matter. It's the heart of the analysis for the demand side of the equation. So you have this terrific headwind, but you also have some support here uh, about obviously what's going on vis-a-vis -vis Iran and what may go down there. Uh, there was a couple of moments over the past couple of weeks where it was uh, you know are we going to fight tonight type of a situation. Um, there's some reporting actually as I was coming on here. I, know, I was noticing about. Uh, U.S. military assets moving around the Persian Gulf. So, you know, this is a very, yeah. very nervous market, although definitely being held down by those economic headwinds. John, John uh, your point about the lack of global demand and, and soft GDP, I, I, I guess a lot of people say OPEC has lost its power, lost its ability compared to, to years or decades past. But given that soft demand picture, are they in fact doing a much better job than perhaps people w would realize on the surface, as the price might suggest? Oh, I would say so, yes. I mean, they have brought down global inventories. The global inventories are close to their five-year average, Wolf, which is their sort of benchmark. Um, they're looking to play with that benchmark a bit. Uh, but, but yes, you know, you know very much so. Uh, it, I think it's hard for maybe the average sort of American to understand this or get a, get a grip on this because our economy is obviously doing so much better. We're sort of an island of prosperity. Uh, I think the worry sort of is, is do we get to import this, uh, this illness that's out there? Because I'll tell you, the data out there, the way crude is reacting to it, I think speaks volumes. And, and to the extent that the Fed is looking to do one of these uh, uh, pre preliminary or preemptive cuts, uh, the oil market will give you the justification for it. I'll tell you that. So, John, it begs the question, if, if you're looking at equities within the energy sector, are there opportunities here or do investors need to steer clear? I think you mostly need to steer clear. You sort of need to pick the, the right banana off, off, off the garbage mound at this point. Um, the energy is waiting, and the S&P 500 has fallen to about 5%. It's, been, it's incredibly overlooked. Uh, so, the, sort of, so here's like the stocks to look at. Uh, BP is one. Um, obviously, all the problems they had from the big spill uh, still is a laggard relative to value in terms of P.E., uh, but has great dividend cover. So if, to the extent it's going to catch up with its peers, you can go there. Uh, the refiners are, are really the other uh, area to look at, uh, Valero, Marathon you know, being the two biggest ones. We just lost a sizable refinery on the East Coast due to that big explosion. Uh, also, too, there's a big hiccup coming for the marine fuels part of the barrel that's going to help, I think, push up margins for those guys. And also, too, again, you got to try to see if the problem children can work their way out of their mess. Like right now, Occidental is the other one on the uh, sort of major uh, producer side. Uh, to the extent they've been taken down now by the, the aggressive tactic of uh, con trying to consolidate with Anadarko, uh, that's one that could emerge in this. That's probably going to that's gonna end up being a great combination uh, for those two companies, particularly after Oxy sheds some of the uh, non-overlapping uh, assets that Anadarko has. So that's going to work out. But that's how you have to sort of look at this mm -hmm. sector for now. They keep disappointing. ExxonMobil's earnings last quarter were another huge disappointment. So you just can't touch them.